Wait a minute, I got boogers. You need a, you need a tissue? Bill, let me right? borrow your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that, Andrew, it? come on, man, let me borrow uh -huh. your shirt. <laughs> We're family, man. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here, and welcome to season eight of VO Buzz Weekly. We are kicking it off with talent management rock stars. When it comes to managing talent in the entertainment industry, these guys are leading the way. They are the powerhouse bi-coastal team of ACM talent. We are so excited to get buzzed with them here today. They are Mark Gus, Phil Sutphin, and Andrew Atkin. Yes. Here we go. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. It's great Thank to be you. here. This is so yeah. exciting. Yeah. Andrew was with us a couple years ago, but to have the three of you together is so cool. This is really Thank cool. You. Um, I personally adore you guys, and then I happen to be your client, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now, that was an unpaid now, did you want to be on the show but just because Stacy's a client? Or no, they wanted you to actually see the watch cottage. the show? Or uh, we're, we're big fans, although I said I'm not going to plug your show <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> But we're definitely excited to be here, regardless of the fact we love Stacey. There you go. Good yeah. answer. Well, we Just for that, we're going to ask you good questions. I'm telling you, they, they know how to. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, we have a lot of questions for you guys. And these opportunities are really, really, really special because this doesn't happen a lot. When we get to sit down with three power managers who've, come, who've got so much knowledge to, to share all at the same time. So take out your pencils and here we go. Or pens. Yeah. Or, or iPad. iPad. <laughs> <laughs> old school, baby. Keep Charcoal it old school. Crayon. So check this out. You guys have literally been pitching and selling talent for a long time, many, many years. Um, how has that changed today and to how it used to be? And how, how is your job different today? Um, this is regard. one of the easiest questions okay. because there used to be something called a telephone that had a line to <laughs> right? it. Yes. And we spent the majority of our days on telephones, now with email, mm -hmm. that's the way people communicate. So, you, you know, whether, whatever electronic, you know, communication, somewhat in social media, but. And it's a 24 seven. It's 24 seven. Right. I actually never tossed my computer. So I really yeah. don't have, I was sitting at my desk and my assistant was saying, what are you doing? Why are you on your phone? Cause she thought I was just on my phone. I said, no, no, I'm actually doing, I didn't even turn on my computer then. Right. So. Um, yeah, everything's 24 seven, you know, iPad, iPhone, iPhone. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that's our Apple plug. Yeah. There yeah. You go. <laughs> this segment sponsored by Apple. And <laughs> Andrew has, has, for you, has it changed is it the same thing for you? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, again, it was, it was all over the phone before. Yeah. I mean, calling E and calling the networks and introducing yourself and, and now getting people on the phone, I think is more difficult than, mm -hmm. than yeah. ever right. because people kind of hide behind yeah. emails. Um, but Technology changes everything. You know, yeah. the 24-7 the kind of thing, we've messed that up. Like, yeah. our industry has messed it up because mm -hmm. we will respond to a text at 9 o'clock at night. Hey, I just sent you a casting. Can you get back to exactly. that practice right away? And is right. the is the part about selling the talent, is it, is it easier, faster that way now with technology? Or do you have to go through some different loops? Or that, I think that process is the same. The same. It, it, yeah. It, it, when people want talent, they want to hear from us. Exactly. Um, when people are kind of in between, that's when we have to allow them to understand what we do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Put on it, the special sauce. It, it, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. It, you know, whether it's advertising agencies or production companies or networks, yeah. a lot of people don't understand, you know, exactly what we can offer, exactly yeah. just how much great talent we represent and yeah. how much, you know, how they can do better. And you always hear, used to hear the term, especially here in Hollywood, it's like, oh, you know, let's do lunch and we'll talk mm -hmm. about it. And you literally would talk about business or, let's right. do FaceTime. you know, <laughs> over, over a lunch. Does that even exist anymore? I or? mean, lunch really almost doesn't exist in our business. Right. And, you know, it's hardly a, you know, a, a conversation on the phone. It's hardly, you know, an extended email. It's like the buyers that we're talking to, they are busy. They we know what they do. They know what we do. And, you know, whether, I mean, we're dealing with so many different buyers, but the buyers that we're not dealing with or the up and coming producers that we need to yeah. uh, introduce ourselves to, 
you know, they're the ones that were just basically saying, you know, here's the deal. This is what, you know, just send us, you know, the, you know, opportunities or, you know, we'll, you know, and we're in the mix. And it literally can take, you know, a relationship that could last for 10, 15 years could take 20 seconds as an intro and we're there. Because the performance from us via our clients or our clients, you know, via us is, you know, the first audition. Um, and we're off and yeah. running. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like there's the same kind of sense of loyalty with your buyers? Because, I mean, from the talent side, sometimes, you know, you have people that have these long-running gigs. But then it's also like, great, we worked with you, now we want someone else. From your side, do you feel like there's still a sense of loyalty with the people that have come to you to get talent? We absolutely do. And we just, and like we said, we notice more and more that the loyalty from you know new buyers are there um, and we see that it's almost like these new buyers the you know the younger producers that you know which are fan- who are fantastic because mm. you know they're the ones who are going to yeah. you know be running the show down the road um, you know they instantly become a valued buyer to us so yeah the answer is yeah i mean yeah but i, I do want to jump on that cuz that's a really good question because because of our detached connection with them yeah it's tough to maintain that relationship. So mm-hmm. you you can't get lazy and think, well, because I I you know this company or this agency or this network we've worked with them town. before exactly that mm-hmm. that oh they'll call me again. You have to maintain that relationship, yeah. and I think that's the most important thing in this industry is understand that relationship is that's that again that's the most important thing yeah is maintain yeah. Yeah. that relationship. Yeah. So even though there's the lunches are gone and all mm-hmm. this you could get telephone communication and chit chat. You're still building relationships. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you have to build relationships with the idea that you have to build a bigger network. Exactly. Because the people we're speaking to today, yeah, there's a really good chance they're not going to be in the industry mm-hmm. in six months, maybe next week. Didn't even think um, about that. Yeah. It, it, the flip side is, you know, occasionally you'll do great work for one producer. And like Mark said, you'll work with them 20, 25, 30 years yeah. in some cases. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can personally attest, and this is an unpaid endorsement, <laughs> but not only just because geographically you guys have a broad reach, but the three of you have such individual strengths. And between the three of you, you really complement each other. And and so all the bases get covered, which I think is really special. And, and I love that about you guys. What was the inspiration for creating ACM? What is kind of your mission statement that drives you guys forward? Well, the management world, the table has been set in the management world. It has been traditionally movie trailers with a sprinkling of promos. Like Mm -hmm. that's really what it was. Um, We could have opened, we could have started our own agency, but, you know, we have been to every agency pretty much, you know, yeah. between the three of us and we don't need to go down that list, but yep. it's quite a list. Um, but we just were really forward thinking with where, what's the future of voiceover? Where's everything going? Like you see what's happening, you know, on the, the, um, digital front of, you know, how voiceover is being marketed or, you know, there, there's, you know, agency is one thing and then there's this whole other thing and there are whole other things and there will continue to be other things. So we needed to find a great place um, to be. Um, So, you know, since management was there, we, you know, managers pretty much have done what they've always done. Mm -hmm. And this was just a real easy transition for us. Um, And, but what, but most importantly, the reason we decided to do this is because there was a hole in that, uh, in, in the management area that didn't cover everything in voiceover. And, you know, we always took pride in having our clients be multifaceted talent. So with that in mind, we needed to make sure that if we're going to do this, we're going to be able to, you know, provide every opportunity in voiceover to our clients, which has been really appealing from day one. And, you know, we're really happy. Yeah, and that's we what all, I love yeah. about yeah. you guys. That yeah. You guys don't just do one thing. You do a lot of different things. They're like the 405. They got lanes, lanes, <laughs> lanes, lanes. <laughs> so just so that everybody knows, what are some of those other genres that you guys actually represent? Well, you, you, you know, for? obviously, you know, our business yeah. has been formed by commercials. Mm-hmm. And that's really where, you, you know, 
the foundation of our entire business is yeah. every talent agency started in commercials. We all started in either promos or radio imaging or movie trailers. So we had a completely different experience yeah. of what the business was. And one of the things we saw was the commercial business, the SAG after business, yeah. for instance, was experiencing some real rough patches. And we realized it was like there's more opportunities theoretically than there's mm -hmm. ever been in history. But the fact of the matter is there's no one putting it all together. So, you, you know, for instance, you know, TV narrations. Yeah. Um, there's a ton of business out there. Yeah. It's just you really have to dig and dig and dig. And it doesn't matter if it's that or promos or movie trailers or political advertising or radio imaging, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It, all those, it, they're all separate businesses. Completely. That yeah. we have to dig into. And what we try to do is, you know, we try to have initiatives where, you know, for three, six, nine months, we'll really dig into something and say, we have to focus on this um, for X amount of time and build a foundation because this is where our business is heading for a period of time. Yeah. And we have to be there when <laughs> it's we're ready to pounce. Of and course. once and that's established, it's, it's yeah. up and running. It's there. Yeah. yeah. And, and we also have to do it because occasionally we'll have talent that will say, you know, we have all these people who are really right for promo. Yeah. As good as we are in promo, we have to rededicate ourselves, yeah. you know, for the next six months. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And, and just to kind of add on to that, it's as, as we're forging these, these paths, we're talking about the offshoots. Like when we talk about trailers, yeah. we talk about, you know, most people think of narration in trailers, but there's also ADR. And from ADR goes into looping. Mm -hmm. And and from looping it potentially goes into animation or goes into full-on, you know, voice replacement in feature films and stuff like that. So yeah. you've got all these different subcategories that, as Phil said, kind of start in the commercial world or yeah. the promo world or the trailer world yeah. and then expand into all these other areas. So let me ask you this. Uh, forget about the people that maybe you already represent, but if somebody new was looking for representation and they were looking at you know a manager situation like you guys, um, which really you're kind of like manager agents, you know what I mean? And you're like two, like two and one almost because you do so much. We, but that wasn't my yeah. question. Okay, uh, <laughs> forget I said that. Uh, my question is: so for somebody new, would it behoove them to come into any situation saying, "Hey, I'm really great at all these different genres," be or be versatile, or rather than just one genre? Well, if they are great at a genre or a few genres, yeah. then we're going to take notice. But for the most part, it's the catch-22, whether it's mm -hmm. us or an agency. Yeah. It's, you know, telling us that you're an emerging talent yeah. without having something to, you know, to offer um, is what any agent or manager you know, is would expect. Um, so, um, listen, we have, we take pride in, in new, in, in developing great talent into yeah. you know mega you know voiceover stars but yeah. um you know it, the the entry to that is is very difficult is, is challenging. But, but your roster isn't big so is versatility something you really really think is important in the industry it, yes. of now because we don't want yeah. a client we we can't have a client on our roster who is really just interested in one area we don't want that that's that's really the crux of the philosophy of, right. of, of our company mm -hmm. we, you know you know even with you know like radio imaging like i i won't really want to take on a radio imager if they're not in, if they're actually not doing promos or you know narrations and animation and you know all these things or the, you know they really want to um yeah you know it, it, yeah or they have the capability of yeah doing it. yeah yeah so kind of like the specialty store turned into walmart now the voice actor has to turn into multi, you know, talented in all these different areas to add value to their Well, it's bad brand. value to their career. Right. I mean, if I think any voiceover actor who is stuck doing one thing yeah. is kind of cutting, you know, chopping off their own foot, yeah. they yeah. have to realize the different things they can get into. Yeah. You it, know, it, a trailer it, voice that is just a trailer voice is not going to be able to do promo for a lot of networks. Now, there's a lot of networks who want a trailer sounding voice, NBC, for example, yeah. um, ABC, for example. 
you know, so they want that kind of understated read. But there's a lot of other networks like Fox, like CBS, that want a more higher energy read that yep. is not going to fit with with a, a promo style or a trailer right. style that is going to work for that. So the versatility is important, and understanding understanding number one their limitations, and also understanding you know the the ceiling as well. Right. And that's one thing that we do as as a team with working with our clients is is somebody might come in. Mark might bring somebody in who is. This is an imaging guy and is, has 100 stations and this is what they've done. And we as a team will listen to their demos and listen to their auditions and go, you know what? There's something there. Yeah. Let's give them, let's kind of push them into this direction, whether it's right. introducing them to a coach or whether it's making sure that they're they're tweaking their auditions in a certain way to expand their their potential. Right? Exactly. We, we actually signed an act, we signed an actor a couple months ago, and he's so good. He's such a great conversational sound. And um, you know the obvious was that oh this guy's going to book a commercial you know in and minutes. Yeah. What was the first project he booked? A major promo account for a major network. So you know, and he never did promos before. Right. So mm -hmm. we were so. I mean, we get surprised every day. I mean, when we send auditions back to a producer, you know, in our heads, you know, we might think oh we know who's going to get this, but when they don't and someone else does, and it's you know a real surprise. You know, it, it really gives us a good feeling of wow, like you know, yeah. this person is now yeah. on their way to yeah. that diverse career. But One with thing, the cycles of the industry, you know, sometimes, you know, this may be a busier genre, so yeah. it is in the best you know, the best interest of the talent to be developing those different skills because not every part of the industry well, is going to be completely. At the same yeah, time. I, I just want to just interject real quickly and just say. That that's one of the great things that I love about you guys, man. Because I, Stacey and I both have have had the opportunity to get to know you guys each individually, and you're mm -hmm. all a stand up guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just like really great people uh, first, and then you are a team because we know that you guys talk all the time, yeah. and no matter what is happening at ACM, each and every one of you knows exactly what is happening with every single person that you guys represent, not just one of you, and that is rare in this industry, especially today, but it's so cool and so amazing that you guys take the, the time details. to do that. Yeah. So you guys come across a lot of talent. Um, do you have any, do each of you have just a uh, a nugget or two of a real, just your top do or don't for being in the industry. In, in terms of reaching out to us or in terms no, of No, in terms in of just being in the industry for talent that you see some things that maybe are, are they need to do more of this or less well, of well, that, whether it, they're your client or not. I'll say this, and I've been saying this now for about 10 years. It used to be that voiceovers was strictly a talent business where if you were really good at your job, somebody would hire you. You'd go to a casting director, some big advertising agency yeah. would hire you. And it's possible you could make a you know, million dollars uh, doing certain work. The fact of the matter is it's much closer to a service job now. You get in with talent, but it's the service that you provide which keeps those jobs going. And as great as it is to book auditions, the fact of the matter is you want to book auditions that lead to more and more and more jobs. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, right. you know, we're always looking for people who can perpetuate work. And the way to do that is service. The, you know, to make people comfortable with yeah. the idea that working with you is a great experience yeah. and they want to, you know, again, perpetuate yes, that. Yes, yeah. that. Um, do, do any of you, do you guys have any, or, or like a, a don't or a do that you think you just want to put out there? Well, I know Mark. You Mark got, has probably a lot Mark of Mark has a scroll. <laughs> do not do this anymore. <laughs> Take the bait, Mark. Come on, do it. Take do out it. the notebook, Mark. <laughs> the topic, patience, right? Patience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it's someone who just gets into the business because they think, wow, you know, I just, this is my lottery. Quick, easy and money. I'm about, right. And we know that that's not what this business is, it can wind up being that. And just like every discipline in the entertainment industry, like you're getting into it, like, you know, this is the expectation needs to be, you know, yeah. um, curtailed. Um, but um, yeah, I think it, I think that word um, across the board, whether it's a developmental talent to a veteran, because the business has changed. So veterans now who used to make a ton of money, who yeah. might not be making a ton of money because they might not have adjusted to the industry, just like, you know, in the NBA, it's like a different game. Like, so, yeah. you know, and because it is a different game and the expectations for years and years and years were, was, you know, I'm making seven figures, high six figures, what's happening. You know, it's about now 
you know, um, let's have a, you know, a, a discuss an internal discussion of what we need to do for you or, and what you need to do mm-hmm. without, you know, playing the game of being impatient. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll add on to that also. I mean, so the, the do is, you know, stepping from what Mark's saying is, is take your business seriously, you know, realize that that you're, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to take time. And by taking it seriously means, you know, invest in coaching, invest in a demo, invest in the things that, that represent you as a working actor instead of just emailing out. So the don't would be emailing us, you know, a recording from your iPhone saying, this is what my voice sounds like. Mm-hmm. I'm available for jobs. You need me. Which has right. happened yes. a lot more often than yeah. you care to mention. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah. But you have to expect to be, you have to expect the veterans now have to expect to play the 2019 and beyond game, yeah. which is, there's a lot of stuff coming at you. There's a lot of stuff that may, you know, that maybe I wasn't really addressing yeah. that I need to now. That mm-hmm. is going to, you know, if you're not really interested in doing that and you want to just yeah. play the old game, it's not going to work. Yeah. The talent have to evolve with the industry Absolutely. as yeah. it evolves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an easy thing. I mean, the industry is established enough that you can find coaches, you can find mm-hmm. people to guide you along the way. I mean, it's it's like everybody has to start from someplace, you know, and reaching out and saying, hey, how do I get into voiceover? That's not a bad question, mm-hmm. yeah. but thinking that just because you're sending, you know, a cassette tape or something like that of your voice, that's enough. For it's not enough. enough. So you guys, all of you, all three, you have a very, very interesting and diverse background. And uh, can you share a little bit, like give us the maybe a little bit of the abridged version of where you guys started, how it all started for you, and actually what led you to where you are now? How did you get here? We'll start with Mark. Well, just... To go way back for a second, yeah, I'm first generation. So my family came here from you know came to Brooklyn, started a, a leather business, uh-huh. and here I was watching my mom, who you know came to the country, and you know really didn't have that formal education. But if you have it, you have it. Yeah. And here she is selling, you know, being an expert salesperson. And I'm just watching this every day, like how is she doing this? Yeah. And I think it's either you have it or you don't. And in the uh, basement of my store, we had buttons and it's a leather store, leather jackets. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the button guy. And I kind of, you know, took that and like started, you know, putting it out there on a display and, you know, selling buttons where, you know, the, the parallel is, you know, here I am in the entertainment industry, which is, you know, like that leather store or voiceover is that leather store and these buttons you know, that little button store uh, or division, yeah. you know, could be, you know, whether it's promos or imaging or whatever it is. And, mm-hmm. you know, you just run with it. Um, but, you know, I, I basically went to law school, started interning and came out, worked at CESD answering phones. And then I went to scm m which where mm-hmm. I met Phil right. at scm m Phil starts this promo department that from scratch, never, no one ever started a promo department from scratch before. Phil does that. I didn't really know what he was doing because no one did. And <laughs> did you try to sell him buttons? <laughs> he, I got some yes. buttons for you, Phil. Yes, Have he had every button. In the, in, <laughs> that was well buttoned. Yeah. Um, so I really didn't, we really didn't know what Phil was doing, but he was creating a promo department that every agency pretty much replicated mm-hmm. uh, thereafter. Yeah. So, and I was doing celebrity endorsements with the president of SEM and M. Harry Abrams gets in touch with me, says, do you want to start our promo department? And I said, I really don't know what you're asking me to do. And he said, isn't an agent, an agent, an agent. And I said, that's interesting. So went there, started their promo department. And um, the agency that I always wanted to be at, um, that I wasn't able to get into the mailroom program because I wasn't able to type fast enough and do whatever they needed me to do. (laughs) When I was in law school, um, I actually uh, wound up going to William Morris because they wanted the promo department. So I wound up there because of this circuitous route and was at William Morris for quite a long time. Started their promo department and then started the radio imaging business because I just saw a client who had 25 radio stations, was the voice of 25 radio stations. And I said, wow, this is a business. Wound up signing every radio imager out there and turned them into, you know, these uh, multi-genre voiceover successes. And that's my story. And then we started ACM together Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, that's where Phil and I 
and you actually came full yeah. circle. And you yeah. were like, no, an agent is not an agent. It's not an agent. <laughs> right. It's not an agent. It's, it's a now a manager. There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Phil? Yeah. So I, I actually worked in sports television out of college. And I ended up deciding I wanted to go to film school. Ended up at Columbia. And I really just fell into a job during uh, pilot season at Buckwald. Yeah. Don Buckwald mm-hmm. and Associates. And as it turned out, they were just doing promos at that time. They, they, they were figuring it all out, but for the most part, um, they were creating something really interesting, um, mostly because they already had talent doing it. They figured it's like, let's start a department. We have these guys who are already working in it. Well, because I worked in television, I was virtually the only assistant and maybe some of the agents, some including here too, who really understood what a promo was. Mm-hmm. They really just were so focused on commercials they didn't understand that you could do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of promos in a year and make double what that, you know, great residual downy spot was paying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I went, I went from Buckwall to SEM and M they, they asked me, it's like, can you do this? Can you start this? It's like, yeah, I'd look forward to doing that. And from there, eventually got to ICM where I ended up helming the East coast division and, um, when I was there, um, I, I had worked in commercials at Buckwell initially, like yeah. on camera. It wasn't completely foreign to me. But what we tried to do at ICM was also do as many things as we possibly can because we're in entertainment. Yeah. And it wasn't just about Dove Downey, you, you know, yeah. it, it was about getting narrations for television series mm-hmm. or you know, again, movie trailers yeah. or wh- whatever. Again, more in that entertainment sphere than just advertising. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So, Andrew, what about you? Well, I, I love that that we go all the way back to childhood and selling buttons. I think that's awesome. Because <laughs> when you said that, I wasn't even thinking about, wow, I've been in sales my whole life. I remember mm-hmm. selling ink. My cousin and I made mm-hmm. ink and pulled a wagon around the neighborhood selling that and the newspapers and stuff like that. But that's the boring stuff. The, the interesting stuff, I, as far as- But like, I'm sure you excelled at it. Not really. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> we were begging people to buy this stuff. Dang my ink, man. So, you know, for, for whatever we were selling it, for a quarter or a dollar or something like that. But, um, and then marching band stuff. But um, no, I undergrad, I studied film like, like Phil and uh, it was like a minor and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. and. It's like I, I, I loved reading and loved writing and kind of through college uh, was working and then moved to moved to L.A. because I got accepted into um, MFA program at Chapman. Go Panthers. Um, although Go Bucks is the most important thing because it's Ohio <laughs> State. So that's the most important thing there. But um, and I was in I was in film school and was had worked at a production company and needed a job. And the company I wanted to work for, which was the Jim Henson Company, because I was a big Kermit fan. And the Henson Company wasn't hiring. And the headhunter introduced me to SBB, Sutton Barth and Minari, and got me, helped me interview for a position as a booth director. And I didn't even know what voiceover was. I, I mean, I loved playing around with audio and music and things like that and film school and stuff like that. But this is a whole new world as far as like the voices behind this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And being a booth director was an incredible experience because I was brought in to direct. So all I, my focus was directing the talent. That's it. They read a script and they missed a word. You fix it. If they miss the direction, you adjust them. If, um, you know, whatever the genre was, but, but even in that world, I was still learning the difference between animation, promo, Mm -hmm. commercial trailer, stuff that we, we talk about a lot now, but stuff that at the time I didn't know, um, I didn't know the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, from SBV, uh, went to William Morris, was promoted within a very short time to take on promo and trailer. And just like these guys, you're kind of in, in this industry where like, well, what is this? What am I doing? What do I need to do? And I will agree with Harry in that sense that, that if you know how to sell, mm-hmm. that whatever you're selling just kind of becomes second nature. So you right. find that you're selling yeah. your voiceover talent to the networks. And the learning curve for me was I didn't realize what promo paid. So I was getting people jobs and then seeing, oh my gosh, wait, what? They're making this much money. Mm-hmm. And not that that like that's that was the motivating factor. Because for me, the motivating factor was to get people jobs. Yeah. Like that that was it. You know, the return, like, you know, that's one thing that that we work well together is while we are driven by money, we're also driven by 
by getting our clients job. Yeah. And that's, you know, ultimately the bottom line. Well, that concludes part one with Mark, Phil, and Andrew, ACM Talent. And we're going to be back next week with part two. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so now. Yes, you don't want to miss it. Make sure to follow all of us on social. Thanks for watching. We love you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>